Hi everybody. Students can at times find themselves without clear strategies to deal with solving problems in maths. So it can be, you know, a bit of a downer for, for kids and it makes people not like math and we want to do something about that. The problems with lack of clear strategies is often to do with uh, the cases where the context is unfamiliar and several steps are needed to get to an answer. So I'd like to propose something that might help. It's Herbert's hack for problem solving in maths. Very briefly, my hack for problem solving in maths combines ideas from other teachers I've seen, especially in Queensland and Victoria, amongst other places, and also uh, something that some people, especially if you teach English, reciprocal teaching. This one here is a reading comprehension strategy and has a really good effect size. The other one is from a special mathematician, bit of a hero of mine, George Poldia, a famous 20th century mathematician, and he has the four steps. And if we combine all those things I mentioned, we have something that might help our problem solving in mathematics. So a very quick run through the process here. First of all, we need to predict predict what maths might be involved in the question. And we need to make a suitable estimate um, for what the range of the answer might be, if we have a, an inkling of what that might be, uh, what units might be used, what background knowledge we might have to tap into. I always get students to write something there. Um, I tell them you can't get this step wrong. Okay, so in a sense it is a hook for learning, but also um, it gets people predicting, okay, which is an important part in terms of comprehending the problem and also getting that brain to start to process things and think. The next step, clarify. So clarify is really important because basically, you know, it's we don't really understand the problem until it's clear in our head. What do we have to do? What is being asked of us? What helpful information does there exist? What clues? Um, what further information do we need if there are any gaps? Okay, so especially also words and terminology there. Do we know what it all means? Do we have to look some of it up? Do we have to ask a friend if we're doing this in groups? And by the way, this is a good group strategy. In fact, um, the word reciprocal I mentioned before uh, suggest that in fact this should be done in groups of two, three or four. Um, great if you can paraphrase once you've clarified where well, in your own words this is what I've got to do, this is what I've got to find, this is what I've got to determine. So that's the understanding of the problem now solving the problem. Solving the problem is where you get your mathematician's tool shed, you basically devise a plan and you carry it out, you select a strategy and then you carry it out. Now, some strategies are going to be as primitive as trial and error, and that can be good, and other times it can be very inefficient. Depends on the context, but it can be looking for a pattern. As you can might be able to see down there, there's gets, check, and improve, but there's also using an equation. There's uh, make an orderly list, uh, solve a similar problem that's simpler, and then work up to the more complex one. That's a real winner, that one there. Okay, drawing a diagram is often very, very helpful. In fact, sometimes it's crucial. After you've come up with an answer and you've made the, made the problem, um, made an answer there, you reflect, does it seem right? Is the answer reasonable? Is it within um, acceptable parameters? Does it seem correct? Can we use technology to, to check it if we didn't use technology already? So let's have a look at a quick example. So here we've got a piece of wire 68 centimeters long. We're going to bend it into the shape of a rectangle. And what are the dimensions? that will give the maximum area and we might as well find out what that maximum area is anyway. Okay, so how can we go about it? So just keep the video short here. If you were to predict that you've basically got a, a, what would probably be a very well known shape, a rectangle, we have length, we have width, we uh, are given 68 centimeters. How relevant is that? Oh, I see the at, at all the sides together, the lengths shouldn't exceed 68 and so on. So we link back to um, you would expect the student who's done this to have done you know, basic measurement as a topic. So a few things we'd filter through there. If 
we're looking at clarify, we've got to make sure we understand the language and uh, the intent of words. Interestingly enough there, we have uh, a length of wire, or wire is certain length or um, you know it's long by 68 centimeters well that is not the same as the length of a rectangle is it so that's it that's more of a perimeter and things like that so we need to clarify uh, again clarifying is a really good step to do as a group so we check that that we understand what what we need to do we need to come up with uh, two dimensions um, the length and the width and uh, the perimeter is a given which might serve uh, the third point, paraphrase. Okay, so rewrite, rewrite the task in your own words or, or say the task in your own words. Okay, that's a really good indicator. If a student can do that, they, they have a good chance now of uh, making it through uh, the solve phase, which is next. Now, this question would depend a lot um, on what sort of class was involved. Okay, would it be uh, year 10? Would it be year nine? Would it be year seven? Would it be year 11 math methods uh, and so on and so on and that would dictate to a large degree which um, which plan that students would use there's a whole different uh, bunch of scenarios again if this is done in groups a great discussion can ensue so possibly by the solve phase students could have uh, written down um, a little sketch of their rectangle P for perimeter, that's given as 68 from the previous step there. We know the perimeter is two lots of length plus width. And we can uh, reduce that down and we can divide both sides by two. So length plus width is 34. Now, if students have done simultaneous equations, perhaps they might apply substitution, but not all students will do that, of course. It depends on the context of the class. So this could be possibly uh, the equation one, depending on the uh, background of students. The other well-known quantity, even though we don't know anything about the area of this rectangle, we do know that we can get the, uh, the area of a rectangle by going length times width. We can do a substitution of equation one into a new equation here, giving us this line. Now beyond this, a whole lot of other possibilities can arise too, which is really cool. And, and problem solving is one, messy, and two, creative. And so this is good when you get a rich tapestry of different responses here. Um, I've worked this actual question with all different classes and some adults as well. And, you, you know, you get, uh, it's really encouraging anyway. You get all these different ways of thinking it through. And then when we discuss answers together, it's very positive. Uh, it's very interesting too. Now, a student could um, tabulate answers and they would get um, if the width was 17 they would get an area uh, of 289 square centimeters um, and by using the other equation I'd find out that the width and the length are equal so it's actually a square uh, and that provides 289 and we and we could even generate a conversation is that in general true um, when we have the square does that maximize the area and um, discuss that if it hadn't already been covered um, if you did with guess, check, and improve, yeah, if it was a particular question where the uh, the answer was not an integer, that might um, lead lead uh, you know to a little bit unsure or lack of certainty. But in this one, it's a nice, easy answer: integers. Uh, another way of doing it is using technology. It, it depends whether this is a tech-free or a tech-active question. If tech tech is allowed to be used and a student hasn't covered calculus, they could use uh, graphics calculator and use um, analyze graph maximum to find the same answer and as long as they can interpret what the uh, ordered pair there means. Uh, another one would be to um, find the derivative and find the stationary point setting the derivative equal to zero and still getting the same thing here. And finishing off we do need to find a way of checking our answer uh, seeing if it seems reasonable if we can't check the exact answer uh, and um, discuss the reasonableness of that. So with all that that hopefully leads to happy times and good days when we're doing problem solving.